Do you know how big North Dakota is, stupid? Because we watched Season 7, Episode 3, The Maestro. <laughs> So, Katie. Yes, Derek? How'd you like the maestro? This is another one where I laughed out loud multiple times, but I don't think I liked it. Mm. Did you like it? Eh, um... The last thing I wrote was, meh. Okay. But I laughed out loud many times. Oh, you did laugh, yeah. There was, there was some laughing. You laughed out loud, too. Sure, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> it just happened. Um, so the maestro was written by Larry David. It was directed by Andy Ackerman. It aired on October 5th, 1995. Screen Crush ranked it as the 70th best episode. So pretty, uh, yeah. middle yeah. of the pack there. Vulture.com had it as the 30th best episode. Why? I don't know. Introduction of, uh, Jackie Childs. I don't know. It's, oh, really? Yeah. IMDb gave it a flat 8 out of 10 and ranked it as the 133rd best episode. Oh, all over the place. Mm. So who are the guest stars? Niedermeyer, dead. So Gary Yates played the security guard. He was in In the Heat of the Night, the TV show, The Handler and The Client, two different television shows. Uh We had Mark Metcalf. He played Bob Cobb, mm-hmm. the maestro. He was in National Lampoon's Animal House. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, not the movie. Oh. And the music video for Twisted Sister, Come Out and Play. We're not going to take it? The music video is called Come Out and Play, and the song is called We're Not Going to Take It. Really? What are you going to do with your life? We were just talking about Buffy. Because Sarah Michelle Gellar was a guest judge on Drag Race. Yes. And who was who was, who was Buffy in the movie? Christy Swanson. That's it. Tilda Swinson? <laughs> I recognized him immediately, and I only remembered that his name was Niedermeyer. I didn't look it up, but after the whole episode had passed, and I could like play mm. Animal House in my head, mm-hmm. to where Jim Belushi says... Niedermeyer, dead. I bought you the 20th anniversary of Animal House that came in an aluminum case, the DVD. Do you remember that? Nope. Okay. So we also had Phil Morris, who played Jackie Childs. Mm-hmm. Um, the first of his five appearances in Seinfeld episodes. Hmm. He was also in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, Meet the Spartans, and Black Dynamite. Hmm. So Jackie Childs is obviously a, a parody of the famous litigator Johnny Cochran. Okay. And Phil Morris and Johnny Cochran went to the same barber shop for many years, so he could uh, Ask imitate for the, and <laughs> the Johnny Cochran uh, like, use all of his mannerisms and everything. <laughs> um, do a good impression of him. Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. Elaine dates the maestro. Okay. It's a dirigenka uh, who wants to be referred to as the maestro. I'm sorry, it's a what? Dirigenka. <laughs> so? I remembered that the maestro was uh, Elaine's boyfriend. But not much other than that. The synopsis tells us absolutely everything. Elaine's boyfriend insists on being called Maestro. George gets a chair for a security guard. Kramer hires a lawyer. Jerry looks for a house in Tuscany. I mean, that's what everybody does. It doesn't give away anything, at least. There's Not no, this time. Yeah. It's all setups, no punchlines. I think this, this episode was all setups and no punchlines. Hmm. Maybe the punchlines just didn't pay off. The funniest thing was, how big do you think North Dakota is, stupid? It's funny. <laughs> so this one has a stand-up to start it off. Stand-up's back. Jerry's talking about the obsession with coffee. This beverage has taken over the world. Mm-hmm. And everybody's trying to give you more of it. Even before you're done this, the coffee that you have. Can I fill it up? Can I warm it up? Can I top it off? Can I ask you something? Always. So you're drinking a coffee. 
if you haven't finished the coffee and I say, oh, do you want some more coffee? You're like, yes. And I pour it, pour like more into your cup. Yeah. Different day. You're drinking a coffee. Okay. You finish your entire coffee. Yes. You take that mug and you put it in the dishwasher and yeah. then you go to pour yourself another coffee. You got a clean mug. No, not right away. Not right away. If I put the mug down and coffee dries in it, I will get myself a new mug. If if it is still wet, if I have just swallowed the last mouthful of coffee and I'm pouring myself another coffee, I use the same mug. If there's scum on the bottom, I will get myself a new mug. Why does it bother you that I use another mug? You're using so many mugs. <laughs> it's not like we run out. You've got detritus in the bottom of your coffee cup detritus. and you'll use have, it again it's 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 dehydrated coffee that will be rehydrated with coffee ew and cream it's not like it's around for a week it's around for less than an hour we have the luxury of a dishwasher and many mugs why wouldn't you just treat yourself to a clean mug it's unenvironmentally friendly it really is not it makes no difference you just you just found something that you don't like about me, and now you're going to nitpick about it. I don't not like it about you. I don't understand it. It's <laughs> illogical in my mind. Because it's very clear, and I think you do it for more than just coffee, but right now we're just talking about coffee. That like, if you finish your thing, you're like, new glass, please. But if you don't finish it, <laughs> you can pour in, you can like top it off. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so I had just, I finished a glass of wine at dinner, and I left my glass in the kitchen. To put our kid to bed. And I have now poured more wine into that same glass, mm. disproving your theory right here and right now. Okay, maybe it only applies to coffee. <laughs> Do you think I take a glass of water, drink it, put it down, and then get another glass immediately right after, and drink I, it, it and put it down? It would not surprise me. Oh, my God. I had no idea this bothered you so much. So this episode follows up the last episode and George is complaining about Elaine dishing everything to the rabbi. You're this not is why you're so crabby in the morning. You're like not happy to see me every morning. And I think I've done something wrong and I, and I haven't, but you're anticipating that I'm going to drink from two coffee cups. So you're already mad. It definitely doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> you are very grumpy in the morning. Yeah. It's the morning. Why would anybody eat canned fruit? <laughs> I left that that George is trying to talk about the rabbi. And Jerry's just like fresh fruit is two aisles over. I can understand if you're in the army. I mean canned fruit is, is something different than fresh fruit. Yes, it is. It's canned. But it's like in my mind it's less nutritious. It's not. Well it's been it's less new it's it's been cooked. Uh it's been like stored in like sugar syrup. Do you think frozen vegetables are less nutritious than fresh vegetables? They haven't been uh, stored in sugar syrup. Okay, well you can you can rinse your peaches if that bothers you. <laughs> and then I have to put them in a different can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a different thing. You don't you don't treat them the same way. Are there any fruits that you think are improved coming out of the can? Because I think all vegetables out of a can are not Works. as good. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, I guess the the they're too salty. They're mushy. Yeah. Sure. But fruits improved in a can. I mean, mandarin oranges mm. without the skin and the pith and the the stringy bits. Pretty yeah, good. That's a good one. You know, pineapple. You don't have to cut it up. I like the acidic acidity of uh, fresh pineapple. Still acidic. I don't know. I'm. I'm Peaches, I feel like it's a totally different fruit coming out of a can. Oh, than yeah. A fresh peach. It's and it's almost like it didn't come from the same thing. It's no. so uniformly they must put dye mm. in there. Mm. Right? I don't know. They're it's always probably, exactly the same color. And peaches are different colors. It's probably gotta be on that label if they do. I'm sure it is. Mm. I like canned peaches though. Yeah, but I it's it's a different thing. It is a different thing. I appreciate the the miracle of canning. For, for food preservation and and access to mm. out of season fruits and vegetables, I, I'm I'm pro canning. I just got to put that out there. Uh, do you remember years ago we went to the the 
Agriculture and Food Museum. And to the canning exhibit, the yes. Canning exhibit, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. There's some, some good pictures from there. Yeah. I learned a lot. It's not there anymore. No. It's, now it's, it's a it's fish a, exhibit. Yeah. Well, they like rotate, right? Like once every 20 years, apparently. Hmm. It's outrageous. It's egregious. It's preposterous. Were you able to sip it in your normal fashion? What is your uh, initial thoughts of Jackie Chow's? I mean, he's a caricature of a lawyer of of Johnny Cochran. So I, I wasn't really wanting to see him again. Do we have to talk about the OJ trial now? I guess so. We already have on this podcast. Okay. What we could again. What do you want? What do you want? I don't remember hearing Johnny Cochran talk. Mm. I've heard people do impressions of Johnny Cochran. Yeah, that's kind of true. The only thing I think I've ever heard, like, seen a video of, is if the glove doesn't fit, you must quit. Nobody looked more surprised when that glove didn't fit than O.J. Simpson. <laughs> Look at his face. He tries to put it on, and, and he's just bewildered. Wasn't he on some medication and they're like, don't take it before court tomorrow? I can't remember that, but that does not surprise me. Because then his hands would swell up. Mm. We did watch two, well, we watched two like TV miniseries is yeah. relatively recently, like within the past, what, five years? Yeah. Um, they both came out at the same time. It was a whole, uh, for a while, like Deep Impact and- Oh, yeah. Uh, what was the other movie came out? Independence Day? No, not Independence Day. There's there's Red Planet and uh, Mission to Mars. There was Deep Impact and like another. Then they they sent the miners to the moon. Not the not the young people. The people that mined. Independence Day. That does not happen in Independence Day. <laughs> Have you seen Independence Day? You probably haven't seen seventy five percent of these movies. <laughs> and then there was the Prestige and the Illusionist. The Illusionist. No, we we forgot the name of the other one yeah. before, and then we had to correct it. I don't think it's the Illusionist. Maybe it's the uh, illusionist. The prestige was better. Deep impact and <laughs> the one that doesn't sound like a sex parody. <laughs> it's going to bother me. Deep impact. It's Independence Day. It's not Independence Day. Armageddon. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Independence Day <laughs> and Armageddon are not the same thing. <laughs> They're completely different movies with totally different plots. One involves aliens. One does not. They're both about space. Kramer has a really insane looking short wide tie. Do you think that's the style of tie or he's t- like, is, is that because the, the tie itself or the way he's tied it? I think it's the tie itself because mm. the other tail is about as long as they usually are. Mm. But the main part only goes a little bit longer. It's like in the middle of his chest and it's mm. super wide. It was the style at the time. Hmm. So we do get a goof or an inconsistency um, where Jackie Childs asks Kramer if he put the top on or if they put the top on. I wrote that down. Because Kramer clearly took the top off while he was waiting in line yes. put the top back on. Yes. Well, the lawyer says that you get one coffee drinker on that jury and, you know, you're golden. Are these things jury trials? Would there be a jury? I don't know. Uh, the McDonald's. Hot coffee lawsuit was in 1994. I don't know if it was a jury trial. Like when you sue someone, you don't assemble a jury and have them decide if you can sue them or not. If right. if it's if like a civil matter yeah. is are there juries for that? I don't think so. We need your cousin the lawyer to tell us. Um like if if Jabba World was being uh uh litigated uh sued not sued no if if like the da's office was like going after them for being like publicly negligent mm. then i could see like you know you're oh, accusing them of a crime then they can defend themselves in a jury trial then it's a but criminal if it's being, matter yeah yeah okay if you're just being sued you there's no jury i don't think so you can't just like you can't be like i'm gonna sue you let's get 12 people together to figure out if i'm i guess it depends what it is if if I'm going to sue you because you ran over my foot with your car? No, no jury. Well, that's that's assault. That's an injury. That's a criminal matter. 
Yeah, but you aren't suing me in that case. The jury trial is determining oh. like legal liability. And then we can have a civil trial afterwards to determine damages. Paying you. I was supposed to be on jury duty tomorrow. Oh, is that tomorrow? Well, you it was busy good day to tomorrow. tomorrow. Well, I know I got out of it because I successfully argued that I had professionally important things happening tomorrow. Mm. And it was accepted, so I got out of jury duty. I've never been called for jury duty. This is like the third time. Well, I got I got a notice that I might be called for jury duty, and then this is the first time that I was called for jury duty. I think I would be a fantastic juror. You're you'd be like Toby with the with the Scranton Strangler. You'd be so excited to be on a so jury. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Get to learn all the rules, make sure people are following them. Yeah, you'd love that. Argue with people, tell them they're wrong. <laughs> oh, oh. If only one day I can get called for jury duty. You go into deliberations it, it, it and get so, sequestered. It would, it would be so boring in real life. You would be you can would you? be Homer Simpson. You'd be like, wait a minute, all expenses, get to stay in a fancy hotel, get all our meals. It'd be unanimous and you would hold out. So don't have to see your family. Get to steal some lamps. Not not uh like, not if you're in a jury, but, like, when you're called for jury duty and they're, like, determining who the jurors are going to be and you're, like, there that day. Are you allowed to bring, like, a, a book or – Oh, yeah. I assume so. Are you allowed to bring a laptop? I Where think, do they draw the line? I think the notice said bring something quiet to do because you'll be waiting a lot. So I could probably bring a switch hmm. if I didn't play with sound. I don't hmm. know. Interesting. So in 1994 – the original Too Hot Coffee lawsuit mm-hmm. against McDonald's. Originally, the plaintiff was awarded $2.7 million mm-hmm. in 1994 dollars. It was appealed and like changed to $640,000, which is about $1.3 million today. Wow. Um, and lawsuits against coffee stores still happen when people burn themselves. Hmm. Someone in BC sued... McDonald's last year because the drive through person handed her the coffee and the lid wasn't on. Oh, and man, so she like, it? like, yeah, it like when she held the cup, it like spilled over and spilled on her and burned her and stuff. Mm. The lid wasn't on. I sat down in a chair <laughs> yesterday and spilled coffee on myself. And it was <laughs> who are you going to sue? <laughs> I don't know how much money you got. So George and Susan are going clothes shopping. Mm-hmm. We've never gone clothes shopping together. I assume we have at some point. I remember going clothes shopping with you. Um, we just went and bought you a suit. But you didn't buy me like day-to-day clothes. No, because you're a grown-ass man and yeah. you can do that yourself. It seems like a thing that George should be able to handle himself. Well, I think he can. He Susan just feels like he can't. I, I like when he, I laughed when he says, all right, don't try and change me, Susan. Many women would love to be in your position. Eh, name one. So we are meant to dislike Susan. She's she's more and more disagreeable every time we see her. Is she not? Are we supposed to like her? What did she do that was so disagreeable this episode? She made George buy the red shirt he didn't like. <sighs> oh my goodness, the red shirt. Oh no. Well, Jerry didn't like it either. No, Jerry didn't like it, but then two scenes later, he's wearing the exact same red shirt. No, his shirt was burgundy. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, colorblind. It was not the same color shirt. It was at least two shades dark. It's the complete... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, how could, I, how could I mistake this one red shirt for another red shirt? Clearly, we know who's the visual artist in this It was a sufficiently similar shirt. Was it Jerry and Elaine were wearing the same color shirt three episodes ago? That's like a totally different. That's a cool red. George was wearing a warm red. So George is quite concerned about the security guard in uh, this store. I wrote later on. I hate this story. So this story is a reference to the one and only SNL skit that Larry David ever wrote when he was a writer on SNL that never made it to air. Okay. Um, It was about getting a security guard a chair. Well, I can see why. So the one thing that I'll say about the security guard is 
he doesn't look super attentive. Every time they go over to him, he is like staring up and off into space. Yeah. You know, he's not, you know, scoping people out and got his head on a swivel. Probably because he's already looked at everybody and decided who is suspicious. Does not look quite very, quite very engaged. George, when he comes in to ask him about the chair, is acting very suspiciously. Yeah. And he's rightfully like, what? Like, like standoffish, apprising George as unstable. I Yeah, this story, you just know that it's going to be uncomfortable. Oh, I could see it a mile away. He's going to fall asleep in the chair. Not funny. He says uh, to Jerry in the coffee shop, what, he can't get out of a chair? Look at this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You laughed. You laughed too. So we're back at Jerry's apartment, and we are introduced to the titular maestro. Bob Cobb. Oh, hi, Bob. I'm sorry, maestro. So I don't know if it's appropriate to tell the story of your friend who uh, in high school had the nickname Hooters. Oh, yeah. And then years later- It was in university. It was in university? Whatever. I can't remember. Years later, one of your mutual friends, you know, sees him again and calls out to him, hey, Hooters. Mm -hmm. He was like, I'm a doctor now. Don't call me that. Okay, Dr. Hooters. (laughs) We're still friends with Dr. Hooters, and I really have to stop myself from calling him that. (laughs) I don't think of uh, calling him that anymore. I don't know. Why? It's hilarious. It's fair. Because he's a doctor. That's why. (laughs) So would you call him doctor? No. What do you think about like nicknames and uh, not calling people nicknames? Sometimes it's jarring. Like like if somebody has a nickname, I don't know. Maybe it's more of a guy thing. I think, well, first of all, you can't give yourself a nickname. No. And so if people choose to call you your nickname or don't, that's – it's the same as, you know, you can't dictate what your nickname is and mm. you can't really dictate when people use it. Sure. I, I do take some uh, umbrance with uh, him wishing to be called Maestro for being a conductor in the- Police it, uh, uh, veterans band. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm somewhat skeptical of the whole conductor position. Uh, when he pulls up in the car and he has to finish conducting- Beethoven's seventh. Oh my God. He's just a pretentious guy. You can really tell the strings really like bring it because he raised his left hand higher. Yes. I think I could go up there with a professional symphony, get them to play whatever, and it would still probably sound fine, regardless of what I did with my hands. Remember when Mr. Bean conducted the the band? It worked. Just, they're just waiting. They're waiting for their cue and they, they take care of the rest. Yeah. So Kramer's burn was on the other side in the last episode. Yeah, they, they, he, he like runs in and shows Jerry like the wrong side of his body for the burn. And he's holding that side. Yeah. Where's continuity here? I don't think they had anybody follow, like checking. So Jerry, uh, so Maestro mentions his house in Tuscany immediately. And uh, Jerry says something like, oh, it must be nice to rent a house in Tuscany. He's like, don't even look. There aren't any. And so this irks Jerry. And he goes on a quest to figure out if there are houses to rent in Tuscany. It's a little uh, the lady doth protest too much moment. Yeah. I can I can see uh, Jerry being somewhat offended about, from, from this interaction. I, I think this is a normal reaction. Oh, sure. I see people. myself very much in Jerry in this yeah. situation. I'm like, why did you say that? And then just spiraling off into, I have to figure out, I have to prove you wrong. Mm. <laughs> but I like later when uh, he's complaining to George, and George goes, you're renting a house in Tuscany? No. So who cares? You did laugh at that part. It's the principle of the matter. Come on, George. I wish I could figure out if this guy's trying to keep me out of Tuscany. <laughs> so this episode had some funny bits. You know, that's what's different about me. I can sense the slightest human suffering. Are you sensing anything right now? Oh, when Elaine's making out with 
maestro and she calls him Bob and he stops. She has to say, oh, maestro. She's just not saying aim. Yeah. Like Jerry when he couldn't remember his girlfriend's name. Oh, you. <laughs> Dolores? That's kind of all I have. I just, I, it trailed off for me because it was the dumb chair story. Um, I got a couple more notes because we didn't really talk about, you know, Kramer, uh, you know, he, he puts the, the bomb that mm-hmm. the maestro gave him and it heals his wounds. And he, he's now worried that his lawsuit that he has against Java world is going to go under. Um, whenever I hear the word bomb, I think of two things. One, I think of our friend that worked at customs who once had a man, uh, walk up to the desk and say, I have bomb in my bag <laughs> and, uh, caused a little bit of confusion. Uh, the other time was uh, my girlfriend in university, um, having recently traveled to China and brought back Tiger Bomb and uh, tried to slather it all over my face when I had allergies. Oh, my God. With disastrous results. Oh, my God. Did she ever use some of it herself? I don't think so. Yeah. I did write down uh, what the lawyer says. No one can tell what a bomb's going to do. They're unpredictable. Mm-hmm. I agree. One interesting line that George used when he was talking to the security guard was, you're obviously a well-proportioned individual. (laughs) So awkward. So then George gets him a rocking chair, blah, blah, blah. Jerry meets with Chichio. Chichio. Poppy's cousin who rents him a place in Tuscany for 2 million lira, which works out to 1,700 American. A month or? I was going to like try to figure out that. That seems like a lot. A lot for 1995. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's for the year. Yeah. I thought when that man came and whispered in Chichio's ear that it was some maestro connection and he was going to be like, oh, the house is not a mm. That would have been funny. Yeah, that would have been good. We didn't really need this like scene at the end. like When they're on the Tuscany set at Universal Studios. Yeah. Also... Elaine and the maestro are standing at a window. They, they hear something. <laughs> they walk away from the window. To another window. I mean. Across the house. You gotta, you gotta uh, have I lots of windows. I guess those Tuscan villas, they got windows all over the place. Yeah. Open concept. You don't have air conditioning. You gotta throw those shutters open and get some airflow. I didn't like when the maestro was touching Elaine's face with the back of his hand. It, the, the, the whole maestro thing was, was kind of weird. We can, we can put this one to bed. Super gross. Yeah. Well, the next episode- is the wink. Mm-hmm. What's it about? George gets a piece of citrus stuck in his eye and involuntarily winks several times with hilarious consequences um, involving a uh, birthday card with the signatures of all the Yankees on it. Wow. So I guess you do remember this. Yeah. Season seven, I think, might be the season I remember the most. More than eight or nine? I don't know. Do you have any corrections and omissions? So I said, I guess that Susan brought the hamster to George's apartment. Mm. But that habit trail is there in episode one of season seven when he's playing chess with the woman. So that's George's hamster. So technically, we never see a hamster. I guess not. Presumably, and George kind of seems like the guy, had a hamster, have a habit trail. Never got rid of the habit trail. Never get rid of the habit trail. But there's a scene where... On Reddit, people thought George was emptying his change onto the desk, but he's actually, like, putting food into the cage. Oh. He's, like, sprinkling something, like, not looking, just sort of haphazardly dumping some food into the cage. Well, for all of George's faults, I don't think he would feed a dead hamster. <laughs> we were talking about Snackwell cookies. Mm. They were an example of foods that had higher carb con- con- content. Can they say that? And were cited as a likely contributor to the obesity epidemic of the 90s and beyond. Mm. I found an article that was called Snackwell's Literally Ruined My Childhood. And I was talking about, we were watching a show that didn't feature Snackwell's, but like they were eating it and I couldn't remember what it was. And it was the Theranos uh, thing with um, Amanda Seyfried. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was called. Bad Blood, maybe? Bad Blood. Or was that the other one? There was two of them that came out at the same time. Bad Blood. I don't know which variety, but 
the snack wells I looked up were 44% sugar by weight. Seems like a lot. Fat free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they have glycerin in them, which you can eat, but I feel like you maybe shouldn't eat that much glycerin. So this is basically just like wax covered in sugar. Yeah. Hmm. Are you wearing pants? Yep. Well, goodbye. What's on tap? Oh, we already did that. <laughs> bye bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?